Peace, peace, peace. Let's just go ahead and get into it. Recapping UFC 280, the card that we have been waiting for. Man, did we learn a lot. I had an absolutely amazing time uh, watching this fight. I hope that you guys did too. I think that it started off, you know, a little slow with the uh, Carol Rosa fight. Um, and, but Muhammad Mukhaev came through, took out Malcolm Gordon, as he said he would. Um, we thought he would get it done earlier. That was a pretty good fight, right? Um, and then, you know, all right, I'm not going to lie. I really like AJ Dobson, right? I was there for his contender series fight, so I was really hoping that he was going to do much better, especially after having that uh Jacob Malcoon fight. But I felt like he like he seemed like surprised that he was down on the scorecards when I was like, My guy, like you're not pushing the pace. Like like nothing was like he wasn't he just didn't do enough. He didn't have a bad fight. Like, you know, like in the McCoon fight, McCoon um, was able to just hold him down and, you know, dominate him throughout the whole fight. But at least um, with this fight, like, you know, it was pretty much kickboxing the whole time. And, you know, he just wasn't active enough. He wasn't pushing the, the pace. It reminds me of the other guy um, a couple weeks back. I think his name's Daniel Zelzeberg or uh, I know that I'm, I told you I'm going to butcher names here. Sorry. But like uh, he had his uh, UFC debut the same night that Joe Pfeiffer had his UFC debut. Right. And he did the exact same thing. Like he just wasn't pushing the pace, kind of seemed like kind of hesitant. Um, but, you know, so I was a little bit disappointed in that. Um, the fight with Abubakar Magomedov, I think I got Abubakar to Maga Madoff, right? And the other guy's name, I'm just not even going to try because I know I'm going to butcher it, right? He, uh, that fight, it was what it was. Like, honestly, I was getting ready to go to a watch party. So I was in the shower majority of the time. Like, let's just be honest. Um, I knew what we were going to get from that and, you know, wasn't really into it. Vulcan Uzman versus Nikita Krylov. Boy, they came out the gates, first of all. Who thought this fight was going to go the distance? I did not think this fight was going to go the distance. And when it first started, the pace that they were putting on each other, the shots and the blows, like, I thought Vul uh, Vulcan was going to get Nikita out of there, right? But he didn't. And Nikita was able to bounce back. And, and, and they went the full 15 minutes, and it was nothing but action. I was pretty um, happy. I, I figured Nikita would get it done, but I thought that he would get it done within the distance, like, the second round, um, like, prior to watching the fight but you know Vulcan did pretty good um so yeah I thought that was a really good fight but like even as I'm like watching that like you know like it wasn't really like you know the card wasn't given what it was supposed to be given let's be honest um this fight this is another um Kyle is another Dana White's contender series uh fighter which if you guys don't watch Dana White's contender series start watching it right now like I don't know why, like, I know people sleep on tough because, like, it's been around for so long and they're kind of just over it, but Dana White's Contender Series, like, you start watching that. I feel like that's, like, I don't watch baseball, but it's, like, the minor leagues. Like, it's, like, if you watch football, it's, like, the college football. You know what I mean? Like, you want to see, like, who's coming up. Like, start watching it. And, like, now they're doing the Dana White's Next Level on YouTube make sure you check those out as well where like they follow the fighters that win after the fights and then leading up to their debut flat fights and then like they will recap um what happens after their debut fight so that's really cool and it really just helps you like connect with the fighter get an opportunity to really just you know like because all the time like you don't you don't know who these fighters are like i like to hear a story like i like to know who these fighters are like what they're fighting for i want to get emotionally invested because win, lose, or draw, like, I'm a ride for you. Like, I don't care. Like, as you can see, rocking the Max Holloway hat. You know, win, lose, or draw, that's my guy. Um, so start watching Contender Series for the next seasons um, and watch the next levels. Like, those will uh, continue to come out on YouTube, on the UFC's YouTube. Um, and then let's give it up for Bilal Muhammad. Let's give it up. I am absolutely ecstatic for Bilal Muhammad. I was losing my fucking mind because nobody, like the place that I went to go watch, like um, 
at where my coworkers also watched the watch party, nobody there was going for Bilal. They were like, Sean Brady's going to smash him, blah, blah, blah. You know, and that was pretty much the narrative going into 280. And even if you watch podcast number one, if you watch our first episode, I was saying like, I felt bad for Bilal. I thought it was a bad matchup for Bilal. I didn't know if Bilal was going to be able to get it done, but I was rooting for him because I felt like he had to go He's had a tough time, like, going through that division. You know what I mean? Like, if we go and we look at Bilal's previous fights, so here are Bilal's previous fights, right? You have him beating uh, Lima, which a lot of y'all may not know, but, like, that was, that was a tough fight for him, right? So we had him beating Lima. Then, you know, that fight with Edwards that ended up getting you know, with the terrible fucking eye poke. That eye poke was absolutely disgusting. It was one of the nastiest eye pokes I have ever seen. Um, and then he went, I was there for him when he fought against Maya and Phoenix um, on the same card where Brandon Moreno won his championship and Nate Diaz fought uh, Leon Edwards. Um, so you had that. And then after that, he had to fight Thompson. Like, Y'all know how I feel about Thompson. Like, he's an elite striker. Like, you're thinking to yourself, like, damn, well, I was going to have to fight Thompson. Boom. Wrestles him. Sure. Was it the most entertaining thing we ever seen? No. But he did what he had to do. Like we said, a win is a win, and he went ahead and got it. Then after that, they put him up against Luke. And it's like, damn, Luke is an amazing striker as well. Like, he's going to have to go up against him. Boom. Goes through Luke, like nobody's seen that coming. We was like, oh, okay. And then they put him up against undefeated 15-0 and Sean Brady. And I'm thinking, y'all don't want this man to win. Like, y'all don't want this man to win. And what does he do? Win. Win, 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 win. Fuck everything else. Bilal Muhammad comes through and beats Sean Brady. Man, I was losing my mind. I was losing my mind. I was screaming, let's fucking go. Because nobody believed in him and put some fucking respect on Bilal Muhammad's name. Like, sure, does he have a style that's super exciting? Uh, not to most people, but hey, he's getting it done. He's being dominant. It's not like he's winning razor thin, you know, uh, decisions. Like, he's getting it done. Like, put some fucking respect on Bilal Muhammad's name. Like, and it's a shame that 170 is going through what it's going through, you know what I mean? Because in any other division, he'd be fighting for a title next. Instead, they're probably going to send him to, like, you know, send him to the real wolf, Hamzat, if if Kobe doesn't sign up to fight that. Like, so it's just kind of like, fuck, man, let's stop disrespecting Bilal and give him what he deserves, right? All right. So, Obviously, I was super impressed with um, his performance. I did think that the stop was a little early. I did think the stop was a little early, you know, but at the same time, what was going to happen besides Sean Brady eating more shots, you know, so got it done. Um, Sean Brady a bounce back. That's another thing I want to quickly talk about. Um, Sean Brady posted afterwards, like, yo, like if y'all have anything negative to say, like put it on his page, say it to him, but like, I guess people are, like, going and commenting on his wife's Instagram. Like, you guys are fucking lame. You guys are weirdos. Like, real-life fucking re weirdos. Like, first of all, I think that is very strange in general to go on a fighter's page who has lost and talk shit to them when, like, 90% of y'all are just fans like me who are sitting on your ass, like, not doing shit. And y'all are over here talking to like a world-class fucking athlete. Like they're a bum. Like that's why, you, you know, you see Kevin Holland beating up these strolls and shit because like something's wrong with y'all. Like even the ones that do train, right? So like me and my wife, we started doing jujitsu back in like March or February. You know what I mean? But I'm not going to start talking shit to people in five years. Like even if I am, like it doesn't matter. Like y'all are fucking insane. Y'all are miserable. Nothing good is going on in your life for you to go on a fighter's page who is lost and talk shit to them. Like, that's just, it's just lame and it's weird and it's, it's not necessary. And then on top of that, y'all talking shit to people's spouses and like, what are, what are you doing? Like, it's not his fault that you're a degenerate and place bets on him and, 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 and he lost. Like, how do you think he feels like, like, stop that weird shit. Stop it. All right. Let's keep going. Um, the Chukagian versus... Mano Faro. I know that I'm messing up her name and I, I apologize to everybody because I'm gonna fuck up names, right? Um, it was good. Like, I, I'm gonna be honest. Let me be honest. I wasn't necessarily watching it. I was sipping on some mimosas at that time. Like, I wasn't necessarily invested in this fight. And I, I'm just gonna be honest. Like, if it's a female fight 
bet that the fight goes the distance. I think the stats on that is like 70% of the time, 70, 75% of the time it's going to go the distance. Um, and I just wasn't emotionally invested in this fight. Um, so let's just really get into it. Benil Daryush. Benil Daryush is reminding me of Bilal Muhammad, right? Because the same way that like, Benil just kind of like came, like, I think he's on like a seven or eight fight win streak now. Like, and he's here. He's at the top. 155 is stacked, but they're going to give the, the next title fight to Volk. So that's like, damn, you know, like, Benil, this fight was amazing. I was leaning towards Benil because, like I said, I felt like um, Gamrot's last fight with Sarukian, I felt like I felt like Gamrot didn't win that fight, right? But it was a close fight, so, you know, it really was what it was. Um, but I felt like... Benil Daryush was going to be able to do enough to get it done. And he got it done. He got it done. That shot that he hit Gamrot with in the third round, everybody came up out of their seats. Like, just, but Gamrot's got a chin on him, took that shot and got right back to it. I was like, okay, I see you. Um, that was an exciting fight. I, um, I wonder what's going to be next for Benil. Like, I really think that, like, these athletes got to stop, like, with, like, especially like Benil, like, right? So, if Volkanovski wasn't coming up to 155, we would see him fight for the title next, right? Because, I mean, he's the next in line. Um, but unfortunately, he's not going to. Like, So don't go out, Benil. Don't go out there and fight another killer. Like, fuck this. Like, I get it. Like, I'm not, like, I get it. I hate when motherfuckers are like, oh, I'm just going to sit on the belt. Listen, you ain't got to say you're going to sit on the yeah, Or not that I'm going to sit on the belt, but that you're going to wait and sit and wait for your, you know, your position, right? We all hate that. But at the same time, like, you want a seven, eight fight win streak? Think about Tony. Think about what happened to Tony. 12 fight win streak, the fucking pandemic comes, messes up everything, ruins the fight with Habib. And then, you know, they pull it out their ass to to have Justin Gaethje versus Tony Ferguson go up. And Tony snaps his 12 fight win streak, gets a beat, and has never looked the same since then, and never got to unify his interim belt. That's hard. Ugh. I love Tony Ferguson. I'm a massive Tony Ferguson fan. So I was heartbroken, not only to see him get beat like that by Justin Gaethje, but also just um, the fact that his streak was broken. You know what I mean? His interim championship that he never lost, but was taken from him. He never got the opportunity to fight for the unified belt. Um, and when you're on those type of win streaks, like you guys see, like you guys see like your favorite fighters who are doing well. And then like, you see how quickly they can start to decline. And I don't want that to happen to Benil. I'm not necessarily emotionally attached to him, nor am I like a fan of him, but he put on a really good fight and it would suck for him to go and fight somebody behind him or fight somebody else and then lose that fight. And then, you know, be as well, you know what I mean? Cause there's the percentage of fighters that actually get to fight for the belt. is actually really small. When you think about like, even just getting into the top five, the top 10, the top 15, like it's a really small percentage of fighters that are going to make it there. So when you get to the opportunity to where you're putting yourself in a position to be able to take these championship fights, don't fuck it up by taking on another fight. Because think about it. If you think about the fighters who have been that guy, you know, always show up when the UFC calls them, always taking the fights, though they get fucked. A lot of them get fucked. Some of them, you know, they they get opportunities. But like a lot of times, like when you're that guy, like like if you listen to the things that Tony says inside of these press conferences, like, you know, he's telling you like he was that guy. And it's like, damn, like you get fucked. And so I don't want to see that happen to Benel. Um, I hope that, you know, he's doing well enough to where he's able to not have to take a fight if he doesn't want to. <sighs> the next fight. Now, when this fight was on, my heart was pounding. I was literally shaking because, you know, like we were going for Sean O'Malley, right? Uh, Damon and I, we talked about it on episode one. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. There's still a lot of good information there, especially because we're a new channel and a new podcast. So you guys can really get to know us. But Sean O'Malley versus Peter Yan. Going into it, I thought that Sean was going to play on the outside more. You know what I mean? Play on the outside, pick him apart, good foot movement, you know, use the full octagon. And I felt like 
even though obviously Jan's a smaller fighter would have to try, you know, get in closer and break that distance. I still felt like Sean was like, you know, just play like a nice little city kickboxing type of strategy, right? Like I think Izzy's absolutely the best at just like staying on the outside, picking people apart, uh, counter striking and waiting for, you know, your opponent to become aggressive and make mistakes. I thought, you know, be more of like a bull matador type of thing. Even though I know that Peter Jan is a savage, a fucking savage. I will never forget the first two rounds of him versus Sanhagen. I'm thinking, okay, Sanhagen was looking good. Sanhagen was looking great. That third round, Peter Jan started to walk him down and demolish him. It was terrifying. That's when I was like, yo, Jan is a problem, right? Um, But in this O'Malley fight, now, we were all questioning whether or not, you know, Peter Yam was going to start slow, so on and so forth. That first round was really close. It really was close. But as I was watching it live, um, I gave it to Yan. I was like, ah, it's close, but I can see it going either way, but I'd most likely give it to Yan. Second round comes around. That was a Yan round all day, all night, right? Like, he was cracking uh, Sean. Like, like a really good fight. And the third round comes out, you know, you could, it could be, I was thinking it could be 2-0 Peter Yan or 1-1 for Sean and O'Malley. Next thing you know, yeah, Peter Yan gets hit, you know, and he, that big gush ends up popping up on his head and it's like literally leaking out blood. I'm like, holy shit. But then he pops Sean O'Malley back. Oh, and then like, even just go back to the second round. First of all, this whole fight was a war. Like, this is a fight that like, we're going to have to come back and break down um, because it was so fucking amazing. Like, I, I want to break it down. Like, I want to look at, like, every single one. I've watched the fight now three times. Um, it, and still, with watching it three times, with watching it live, uh, at the end of round three, I thought this is 29, 28, Peter Jan, possibly 30, 27, you could argue, but for sure 29, 28. Um, but it, I knew that it was a close fight, but I still thought that Jan did enough. I thought Jan would get it, but I wasn't mad that they said Sean O'Malley, O'Malley. I was not mad. As a Sean fan, I was not mad. As a fan of the sport, it's upsetting. It's always upsetting when you get those razor close decisions like that or even when you get a decision to where like everybody's like what the fuck you know once again i'm a max holloway fan right um and so that second fight with volkanovsky like i literally lost my fucking mind when they said and still like i it's tough when there's any kind of fight like if you think like to me the worst fucking decision was um reyes versus john jones reyes beat his ass that was a 4-1 that was 4-1 all day and for John Jones to squeak out the like that was like mind blowing to me. I'm like, what are we doing here? And there's been plenty of decisions that have been like that where it's just like, what are we doing? Like, what are not we, but you know, like what are the judges doing? Like, what are they seeing? Like, come out, tell tell us as fans, tell the the professionals, the people who are in there putting their life on the line. Like, tell us what the hell is going on so that we can understand because this is not making sense. Like, the way that y'all are scoring things, like, like it's just crazy. It's absolutely insane. Um, and, you know, it not only does it play with people's paychecks, it plays with um, their records. It plays with you know, just everything. Like, yeah, so as a Sean fan, we're good. As a, as a you know, MMA fan, it should have went to Jan. Um, it most definitely should have went to Jan. So... You know, I'm interested to see, you know, what the UFC is going to do, because now as we fast forward to Aljamain Sterling versus TJ Dillashaw, let's give it up for your boy Aljo, because I was going for Aljo. I know a lot of people weren't. People just hate Aljo, which I don't know where all this hate came from. It's like absolutely crazy to me, but y'all hate this man. And I get it. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I didn't like the way that he responded um, in, in the fight and all that little stupid silliness. And I'm like okay and like who gives a fuck like this man was being clowned this man was being trolled for a year and some change like (sighs) anyways i was going for aljo like i won't ever be cheering for tj tillishaw um i thought that it was unfortunate that tj had that uh dislocation of his shoulder kind of like aaron pico had a couple weeks ago in bellator um 
But to come out, you know, afterwards and TJ Dillashaw was like, oh, you start talking about his shoulder and how it's been popping out since April. Then my guy, why take the fight? You know, you taking the fight says to me that you didn't really put, you didn't really put any respect or merit on Aljermaine Sterling's game. You know what I mean? You come out and say that you were, was challenging his striking because you were hoping that he would then strike with you. Like, you know, trying to fight his ego to make him strike with you rather than wrestle. Cause you knew your arm was popping out. My God, you should have just stepped back, gave somebody else that opportunity to be, because like to turn around and do that, like, like that's, I don't know. Like if it was any other body else, Y'all would be talking shit, but instead y'all still talking shit about Aljo, still calling him paper champ, lucky champ, all these other, you know, bullshit ass words to describe him. Like that man is a tramp, three time defending champ, deal with it, cope with it, do what you got to do. But it is what it is at this point, right? Aljermaine Sterling is the champ. He's the most winningest bantamweight in UFC history. Deal with it. (laughs) <laughs> y'all gonna have to deal with it um but i bring that up on par because you know prior to them this fight taking place you had sean o'malley um and the peter young fight being uh dan Hay came out and said that they were you know seeing if they could make it the number one fight to fight for the belt so now sean's won um and then of course you know in the post-fight presser dana started talking about uh potentially maybe even henry cejudo stepping up I truly, truly hope that for Aljamain, he fights Sean. Fight Sean now, right? Aljamain has a style to beat Sean, right? Um, Aljamain has a style to beat Sean, and it will help boost his popularity. Like, you can tell, like, his whole, like, little cringe thing that he's doing, to me, comes off like, you know, he's just trying to really, like, almost like a Kobe Covington approach um, of just like being like outlandish, but not like as offensive as Kobe Covington is. Um, I feel like with him fighting Sean, that fandom, that stardom, because Sean has that, you know, he has the people behind him. He has the popularity. He has all that behind him. Um, Going up against Aljermaine will really give Aljo that pump and that boost that he's looking for. Um, I think that'd be really good for him. I don't see him being successful against Henry Cejudo at all. I'm done doubting Henry Cejudo. That man has made me upset on many occasions (laughs) as far as just like winning fights that I didn't think he was going to be able to get done. Um, Still didn't feel like he won the second Demetrius Johnson fight, but, you know, DJ's not here. Uh, You know, he's at one FC now, so it is what it is. But I would like to see Aljamain versus O'Malley next. Uh, both for Aljamain to be able to um, solidify another win. I, I think that he has a style to, to, to beat O'Malley. Um, and then, you know, if he fights Cejudo, we know what Cejudo's going to do. We'll be breaking down more of the O'Malley fight, more of the Sterling fight in our podcast. That'll be coming out on Wednesday. So every Wednesday we'll be dropping the podcast. Um, but we'll be going more in depth into that fight, specifically the Jan O'Malley fight, um, just because there was so much there. We did learn a lot. Like if you have watched podcast number one, our first episode, if you haven't, go back and watch it. All right. But if you have, um, you know, I talked about like we needed to see certain things from both um, Sean O'Malley and from Aljo. And I feel like we did see a lot, right? So we'll go more into depth with that. This is just a recap. But now let's get to the main card. Oh, my boy Blue, my boy Charles. Uh, You know, we knew that it was, we knew pretty much it was going to be Islam, right? We knew that Islam was going to get it done, but we was hoping for Charles. Everybody was kind of just hoping for Charles, right? Because with Islam as the champ, you know, we're going to smash, brother. We're going to smash, you know, um, we just want, you know, you're always rooting for that underdog. At least I am. But I always knew that Islam had what it takes to get it done. Now, I did not know that he could get it done like that. I did not know that Islam Mahashev was going to get it done like that. He was hurting Charles on the feet. First of all, I think in the last episode, I was talking about Charles's glasses and then Charles didn't have his glasses on. And I was still just like, oh, what if he could actually see blah, 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 blah. 
completely went over my head that apparently Charles has had uh, like eye surgery over this time and he no longer needs glasses. So he is actually able to see in there. Did you guys know that? Because I didn't. Found that out um, yesterday on Chael, uh, Chael Sonnen, if you guys don't uh, subscribe to Chael Sonnen's YouTube, go ahead and do that as well. Um, but yeah, so on Chael Sonnen, uh, he was talking about Charles Oliveira has had surgery on his eyes, so he doesn't need those glasses anymore. Well, he sure couldn't see them shots that he was getting hit with. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, my feelings was so hurt. Yeah, Islam Islam looked good. He looked real good. And the way that he transitioned and the way that he just dominated Charles. And I said in the last episode, if he's able to dominate Charles, he's going to be a problem. If Charles was able to beat him, he's going to be a problem. But Islam is really going to be a problem for a long time. I don't see a path to victory for Volkanovski. But if Volkanovski can get it done against Islam Mahasha, I want you guys to know. I, I I don't even know what I can say besides the fact that I will literally never, ever, 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 ever speak bad about that man. After what he did to Max Holloway in that third fight, um, and if he's able to get past Islam, because I think Volk can get past pretty much anybody at 145 at this point. Um, getting past Max the way he did in that third fight really just proved to me that, like, he's the guy. Like, he's the guy. There are just certain guys that you can't beat. And, you know, Max met his, he met his Max that night, right? So if Volk can go through and beat Islam, what? What? We've got a fucking monster on our hands. We've got a legitimate monster. However, I think Islam's going to get it done overall. UFC 280. The top of the card was really, really good. Like, it gave what it was supposed to give. Um, absolutely excited for UFC 281. In a couple of weeks, this is three weeks away. You know, we're going to get Izzy versus a Alex Pieta. Um, That's going to be absolutely exciting. But as far as 280... <sighs> We learned a lot. It was absolutely exciting. I hope that you guys enjoyed it because I absolutely enjoyed it. We will be back with episode number two, going over and more in depth with 280. And then also looking forward to UFC Vegas 63, uh, Cater versus Arnold Allen. That's going to be amazing. Um, so thank you guys for stopping in. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can talk shit in the comments. I talk shit back. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's just keep on rolling and going. And we'll see you guys on Wednesday. Peace.